Okay. Yes. Um, dear member of the Board of Trustees, dear guests, dear colleagues, it's with great joy that we welcome Professor Papanikolas at, at uh, our colloquium series. He needs no introduction for his role at the Cyprus Institute, but, but for the sake of our YouTube viewers, he is the president of the Cyprus Institute and the head of its energy division. Today, however, he will step aside from his role as the president and he will engage with us with his work as a scientist, as, a, as an academic. Professor Vanikolas is an MIT-trained physicist with over 35 years of experience as a researcher, an educator, and a scientific administrator. His fields of expertise include nuclear and particle physics, medical physics, solar energy, and energy policy. He has held positions at CEA France and he has served as professor at the University of Illinois and the University of Athens. He served on numerous boards and committees, including Chair of the Council on Education, Evaluation and Accreditation of the Republic of Cyprus, and the National Research and Innovation Council of Cyprus, chaired by the, by the President of the Republic. He is a fellow of the American Physical Society and a member of the Academia Europea and of the Silk Road Academy of Sciences. Professor Vanikolas has over 140 publications in peer-reviewed journals. Today, he will talk about the shape of the smallest object in the universe, but we all know that what the Cyprus Institute has achieved under his management is not small at all. Professor Vanikolas. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Evie, for the kind words. Uh, uh, I'm not it. Uh, I hope I won't disappoint you. Uh, it's a very difficult topic I decided to address. In a way, it's a challenge because such talks I have attended all my life, most of them uh, fail to explain it without the use of mathematics, uh, quantum mechanics, and all that. So I'll uh, give it a try. Uh, and uh, as our colloquia are meant to address uh, such topics to a broader audience, I will try to address only non-experts. So the experts in the, in the uh, audience uh, bear with me, but a colloquium is meant to address the entire academic community. So, um, Um, the shape of the smallest object in the universe. Uh, let me say that uh, this uh, refers to actual research carried out uh, at the Cyprus Institute. Uh, last uh, September, Lefteris Marku, who is on the audience, Lefteris, where are you? There. Uh, successfully defended his dissertation entitled A Model Independent Extraction from the Pine of the Progression Day. It's, it's technical. Basically, it gives an answer uh, to this uh, question. So I will rely on uh, his work. We are very proud that this piece of uh, evidence, the last in a very long series of articles, uh, it's a main topic in physics, came out of the Cyprus Institute. And you may wonder why, what does Cyprus Institute have to do with this kind of research? Uh, I'll answer that one in the process. Uh, this is a cover of his uh, dissertation, as you can see, and uh, it's a major piece of work. Before I go there, uh, I have to interrupt and share with you some uh, not so good news. Um, today, well, the, our community, the Cyprus Institute, and Cyprus, it's a lot poorer. We learned this morning that um, one of the founding trustees of the Cyprus Institute, who played uh, a key role in the uh, uh, formation of the Institute, Andreas Muskos, is no longer with us. Uh, he uh, passed away uh, last night, I understand. 
his uh, funeral is tomorrow at 1130. Uh, he played a seminal role in the formation of the Institute. He was at that time of the 2000, this picture is 2002, uh, he played a central role as uh, being the chair of the board of the Cyprus Development Bank that funded the study uh, or that uh, at the end led to the creation of the Institute. He was a founding trustee, very much interested in and supporting uh, in his role. He was also a member of the parliament. You know, one of the exemplar politicians, honesty, humility, and uh, effectiveness. So may the rest in peace. We'll have his, uh, some event to honor his memory. Um, so let me uh, go to here. You can see him uh, together with Johnny Anidis. At the time, he was the CEO of the bank with President Vasiliou, President uh, uh, Papadopoulos and Hubert Curian at uh, the first meeting of the board. So uh, it's uh, bad that I have to share this news with you, but uh, it's a sad news. Um, um, so this uh, research continuing of uh, carried out uh, actually got the international attention, and you see one of the uh, prominent journals in this field uh, had these results on its cover. So let's see what it is all about. The abstract of the paper uh, out of the uh, Marcus uh, dissertation says da, 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 uh, blah, 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 thus confirming to a model independent way, that's the key word, that the conjecture of a baryon, this particle, proton is one of them, the formation is valid. So this is the key. Let's see how it works. So um, the way I plan to present the uh, topic is to uh, discuss what size means, what shape means, what is it in, in the ordinary macrocosm, what is it in the microcosm, how to measure it, and at the end, conclude with this uh, result and one or two slides what it may mean uh, for our understanding of the project. Let me uh, quote uh, the Pope. Um, he observed, this is very fundamental, I think, that the formulation of a problem is far more important than its solution, which it is at the end a matter of mathematical or experimental skill. And I'll follow this, uh, I think it's very deep, to examine concepts and try to share with you the very definition of the concepts that we want to address and how one uh, could actually uh, access them. Uh, Einstein also said something that is a challenge, I think it sounds easy, that uh, if you cannot explain such things to a six-year-old, it shows that you don't understand it deeply. So it's a big challenge and uh, easily said. Okay, let, let's give it a try. Uh, size of microscopic objects, objects in our surroundings, astronomical objects. What is size? I don't know if you have worried because we said the size and the shape of the smallest, smallest means as a size. So what is size? How do we measure it? How do we define it? Okay, well, uh, one way, if you grab a vernier, I think Arabi has forgot to bring me one, but you know how it looks, a vernier uh, here. Uh, you put the object in the vernier and uh, you feel it and then it gives you a reading and this, this says that the coin here is 2.12 centimeters. But really, what, 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 how do we define it? It's an operational, and clearly many things don't fit in a vernier. Uh, one definition would have been anything that, that the vernier says is the definition of size. But as we'll see, not, you cannot fit everything in a vernier. So what is size? In this case, if you think about it, the vernier is filling some hard edge 
But if you exert more pressure, if and uh, the the object is a little bit elastic, then you will read something else. So how much pressure do you put on the clamp uh, to measure the size? Okay. Size of the Earth. Uh, they give in this. Uh, you can look it up. The diameter of the Earth is 12,766 uh, kilometers at the equator, and actually from north to south pole is a little bit shorter. Uh, how do they know this? How do they measure it? Do they put a vernier around it? Um, uh, how do we uh, do this? How do we define it? Again, is it we press the Earth, or we equivalent, we run a rope around it, or take a photograph from space? Sure. And if you look at the density of the Earth, you see it's not uniform. It's much more dense in the middle. And yes, it has a sharp edge. Uh, the edge, as you say, where the oceans are, call it sharp, or the Earth's crust. And that's where we say begins at an end. What about has atmosphere also? Right? Uh, what about that? But conveniently, we, we ignore it, right? I, I hate this uh, picture. These are the planets. They have them. You find it is very common in textbooks. Uh, as though they are balls of marble or something like that. You can stack them around and you can compare them. And then it's very easy to measure uh, their size because you can put them in a vernier and see how this marble uh, sphere uh, has a diameter. But if you look on the density, you see. Those are actually the big ones, Saturn and Jupiter, are made out of gas, not rocky like our planet or Mars. It's gas. And gas as it is, most of it is in the center. And as you see, it has a very long coil. And they measure the size of what? Why not measure it? It looks like there is a sharper edge further in. So why measure it this way? How do you measure it that way? The sun. If you look it up in uh, any book, they will tell you it's 696,342, not one more, uh, kilometers in diameter. How do they measure this? Uh, okay. The sun is also lots of gas and actually if you look at the shape of it the the distance is this one but all the mass is of very little mass out where they say it's uh, it's its size again what do we mean by size we see every object we look around and we feel comfortable to quote such precise numbers looks very different and we cannot agree how to even define it, let alone measure it. How do we measure the sun? Actually, the way we measure it is where the light is. That's where the photosphere is. That's where you see very thick layer of gas here that emits for the light we see. Uh, so it depends on our eyes. What light we see defines the size in this way. Okay, uh, so um, in this case, it's not the vernier, it's the optical uh, emission. And if we have eclipse and so on, we try to measure it that way by shadows. So what size is, as you see by the very examples I gave you, it varies its definition as it's used in common language, from object to object. To make things worse, there is a nebulae in the uh, in this sky. This is the famous Crab Nebula uh, in the uh, constellation of uh, Taurus. It's the remnant of the last explosion in our galaxy of a star, a supernova. Uh, on the right, you see different images of it 
with different colors, with ultraviolet, uh, near, uh, far, visible light, X-rays. You see, it's very different size. Even because it depends, then you have to say if you measure it in this, measure its blue image or measure its red image, it would be different. So it's the plot thickens. We need to define really what we mean by size before we can ever talk about what is small and big. To make things worse, go to bigger objects, galaxies. Andromeda galaxy is the nearest galaxy. Uh, to our own, it's uh, only 220,000 light years away, and actually, uh, in the future, will collide with our galaxy. They will collide with our own galaxy and destroy each other. Uh, you don't have to worry; it's not going to happen for another four and a half billion years. So, uh, the uh, but they give that it has uh, size. Uh, of this uh, magnitude. What do we mean size of a galaxy? It's a bunch of stars uh, at various distances. Again, it's a matter of definition. So to make, to end with something that is even more uh, difficult to, to comprehend, is uh, hurricanes. Hurricanes, is it an object? It's air, it's humid air moving around, right? I mean, is that an object? It's actually very interesting. It has to do even with the proton, but it's a very interesting concept. An object that is created out of the medium that it's in it because it moves in a given way. And we say when it launched, uh, it hit the, floor, the New Orleans when it did in 2005, um, it had a diameter of uh, 650 kilometers. How do we measure this? Is it, I mean, this is part of the target. Uh, again, very difficult issue. So let me drive one concept to its limit. Size is a very loose definition. We don't know really what we mean by size unless we precisely define an operation, which means measurement. Every time I told you how we measure it, that's what will define size. And actually, this uh, goes back to Aristotle and more, most precisely defined by Einstein, saying that unless you define how you measure the thing, you cannot loosely talk about words in science. And this is uh, one. So we have to be precise. Define what size is. And a definition in physics necessarily means that you need to tell me how I'll measure it. Actually, social scientists are discovering the same thing. Today. Say democracy. What is democracy? I mean, everybody says it's a democracy. Liberty. Unless you give an operational that you need to satisfy this and that and that, in other words, measurable uh, uh, things, approximate, of course, it's a very vague concept. So it goes back to uh, this important methodological uh, approach, both to science but to human knowledge as well. Basically, the end of the story is that the, um, to this topic, is that the only thing that we really went back to was the distribution of the quantity, in this case it's mostly it was mass, how it's distributed, and then we said, out of this we'll measure where it's luminous, where it's Or every 
discussion we had about SAP. So we better remember this because at the end is the that's where we are going to end up discussing to uh, define SAP. Okay, what about shape? Apparently, uh, this is going to be even more fun. Uh, actually, the hard part is if we un agree with the concept as I presented it, shape follows naturally. I showed this already. Uh, the uh, North Pole, as we saw is, uh, from the South Pole, is a little bit sh shorter uh, from the uh, equatorial diameter of the Earth. Uh, and therefore, we'll say, everybody will agree, loosely talking, oh, the Earth is not quite spherical. Okay? Uh, but we need to orient the object to make this statement. And how do we orient it here? Well, they say the North Pole. Uh, what is the North Pole? Uh, well, uh, it's where the compass points, or it's where the spin of the Earth as it rotates, it's the axis, it's the imaginary axis, about it going to this. It's something that needs orientation before we start uh, uh, discussing. So it involves size, we discussed it already, and orientation. OK, so let's try to quantify, then move a little bit faster, quantify the, um, the uh, what we mean by shape. Uh, the, we need an orientation, and uh, so we, let's call it the z-axis. And if it's flat around this orientation axis, Then this shape will be oblate. Closer light will be oblate. But when arrows are this So, a good mathematical definition, which can be measured, as we said, is to define, and it's one of the two equations I will show in this, don't get scared, uh, that weighted by And if it's, we can say, spherical, oblate, or prolate. Prolate, I didn't have a history, but okay. Uh, and we have a way, perfect mathematical definition, which is measurable. Now, how do we measure? We measure that we know how to measure. Right. But, This, so we define it, and we know how to measure it. We need to orient it, remember. Unless we say, which is z and x and y, it's arbitrary how we are going to do, end up with it. So q equals to 0, quadruple moment 0, spherical shape. We need an axis, and we need to know the tension. So I, let's go to my to microscope. This is in our ordinary world. Things in the microscope get a lot more difficult because of the quantum mechanics. And you may have heard about the uncertainty principle. So uncertainty doesn't sound very good. Uh, it means that certain things are not going to be so uh, certain. And the relativity comes into that. It depends where you stand, how you, you move when you observe things. I'll try to simplify those. 
but the same concepts carry through. How small are things small? A human hair, uh, which we have experienced, is pretty small thing. If you take it, and the, this cross section, and ask how many atoms it takes to go across, it takes a million atoms to go to, across. A, a, so, it, atom is a pretty small thing. Okay? And uh, you have seen in your uh, high school uh, text that animals look like that, which is totally wrong. Um, the, uh, this is only for uh, advertising, I don't know, uh, certain products, uh, but it's totally wrong. Atoms don't look like that. They look more like this. Uh, it's a cloud of electrons. Wish of the uncertainty principle. You cannot know where the electrons are. They are everywhere in a given uh, area with a given density. Oh, our friend density comes across, and the hydrogen atom has a cloud like this. The density of electrons around the center, this is the nucleus, it's a cloud like We know the density. The question is, how do we define the radius size here? You can go actually anywhere and uh, ask what it is. Go to, I went to the Wikipedia last night. I said, that's what people will do these days. I don't do it, but uh, that's where. And you have uh, as many definitions as you want. So again, it's all a matter of definition. And there are several definitions. And here, those atoms were covered. As we saw, uh, it's, um, it's a very, um, let's go back, you see it's most of the mass of the atom, it's at very If this building was an atom, now, the nucleus of 99% mass would be no bigger than And yet, we call it size. Uh, limits of this cloud. Well, things get better after that. People got wiser. They said, Do I have to agree on it? Enough is enough. History is history, uh, etc. Let's go and define. Uh, uh, since it's a matter of definition, let's agree on something that from now on, as we go smaller, we'll all use the same definition. So as I said, the center of the hydrogen atom is uh, so small. And then you go into the nucleus, which is a very dense object. Um, and then we can have density of carbon. Actually, uh, so this is beyond imagination. If you take the, the entire uh, 
of the book. It will be something that you will take with you. Uh, nevertheless, the, we have reached by uh, these uh, measures the smallest. to the management in just one billion billion liter and after that there are other like the electric etc etc with electricity but they are so small we know they are smaller than a thousandth of this but we don't know how much smaller as a size we don't know. So all we can say, we know it's smaller than this. So the smallest object in was uh, were made actually most of the, of it uh, by protons and neutrons, and together they are called hadrons. Hadrons are objects constructed by other particles. They are smaller uh, than that. End of the quantum ladder. So, uh, okay, let's uh, see. Uh, these are the hadrons. What we can do with that? End of the ladder. We found the smallest object of the cosmos. We agreed how to you know what size it is. So everybody can measure it very precisely either in Japan or in the United States or whatever, because it's precisely defined and precisely measured. Actually, one of the crises, well, you are full of Sorry to tell you this. You have about that many in your body. Um, and uh, uh, so you are very familiar by it. But still, it's a very strange uh, object is made out of three quarks, as we said, has magnetization as, as though it's a spinning ball, which it's not, but it resembles classically something like that. And also, it can be oriented like a compass. So at the end you have uh, wind and it has a magnetic uh, uh, direction that way. Why is that important? Uh, it's also very, very difficult object to comprehend, but I won't go into that. It's a totally different thing. I'll tell you something so it will puzzle you. So some other talk, uh, somebody else could explain it. Each, you, I said how many uh, products you have, and your mass is half. Half of your mass is about total mass. Each one has three quarts in it, but the mass of the quarts that you have in you is only a thousandth of that. That's a strange algebra. Shows how strange they are. Okay. Do we know its size? We agreed how to define size now. It's known according to the standardization of uh, how big it is. This is the size, the diameter of the proton. It's a pretty small object if you write it in meters. We thought we knew it, 
with an accuracy of about 1%. But nature actually had this as a cover, uh, saying that there is a crisis. Because some other experiments using the same definition find that they disagree by a huge amount, uh, 4%, but if you claim you know something at 1%, then you don't know it at 1% if somebody measures it over and over again and finds it shorter. Okay? So even at the size level, it's a, it's a difficult issue. It's uh, called for the last 10 years the crisis of the proton size. But let's go to the shape. We, I promised you to tell you about shape. What is the shape? Again, we'll uh, stick to our definition. How at least how open correlate is a zero, it's spherical. So what is the product? Is it spherical? Is it oblate? Is it prolate? Is it something else? Um, how do you measure this? So it's a picture. How do you measure this? There are certain objects that cannot be measured. The big surprise came in 1947, when in Colombia, when they, we started measuring such things uh, as the quadruple moment. And uh, Rabi uh, had a PhD student, a very smart one, who was measuring deuterium. Deuterium is hydrogen atom, which has an extra neutron. It's a, it's a, it's a proton in the neutron. And he was finding that it was deformed. Now, it's impossible classical physics with other properties, and you have two bodies to go around it. For you to read your calculations. Um, rub it over. Um, the, Found out that why? Because each one of them Really, subatomic level, a tensor force. This was a huge discovery, uh, shaped uh, nuclear physics, and he discovered the tensor nuclear force. Basically, here, of them different ways. Of course, they end up first. So this is a second concept that we introduced, third right? Size, shape, and how to cause a shape with magnetic moments. But Laschau, another Nobel laureate, we know that the big guy, So, 
works What? The shape of the universe. No now we run into difficulties. How do you measure? Well, by what you measure. Quantum mechanics in this atomic world because we are the orient. and was an impulse. Okay. This is why the deuterium trick doesn't work, because the deuterium I can orient and the proton I can But as I said, it does not mean that it doesn't have an intrinsic shape. So 
How do we measure the intrinsic shape? Okay? Really, we thought long and hard. So, suppose that you go with your cell phone or around the point or around the building, find that you are center of Can you tell me what the shape of the antenna? It's a very difficult. In this case, actually, if you measure it so precisely, actually, uh, it, I said it's a very, very difficult problem, computationally a nightmare, but it can be done, especially if you have very high power computers, like we do. Now we're getting to where, uh, uh, actually, the antenna that produced this uh, pattern is called a Yagi antenna. It's the one antennas we had on our houses to uh, get a TV reception. Okay? So if you measure it, then you can even draw such a complicated antenna. So inverse problem might be the solution. Actually, you are familiar with inverse problem. If you had taken a scan in your life or you have seen somebody taking a scan, you go into the scanner. What does the scanner do? measures the radiation that's emitted from the antenna, and they found what emitted that radiation. Okay, it's an inverse problem. We measure the radiation and we reconstruct what emitted the radiation, which is what the doctor wants to do. It's an inverse problem at your service. So to solve uh, inverse problems is very, very difficult, both mathematically, but the uh, computational uh, needs today make it easier. It's a problem well posed already for 100 years. The solution has really accelerated a lot because of uh, computational power. In our case, we use uh, supercomputer. Actually, the same. A technique we use in this laboratory, another PhD student, Loisos uh, Gutsandonis, who got his PhD a month ago, produced images of this is uh, cancers in a mouse with high definition using exactly the same methodology that uh, Marco used uh, to uh, in a classical problem here, the same general inverse problem methodology to take the picture of the product. Back to the product. So now I'll tell you how we did it. Uh, we cast the issue of the shape of the proton into a tomographic problem. Let's put the proton in the middle of a Maybe we can reconstruct its shape. Okay, so how do we shake it? It's a very elaborate uh, situation. You Fire and of energy. 
numerical because of the rules of quantum mechanics. So if it's spherical, very easy to measure. We'll measure a radiation. But if it's not spherical, then there is another way to produce uh, radiation because of the distortion of its shape. Again, it's limited by the rules of quantum mechanics in this case, which we will not explain, but it's limited to two radiation. A dipole, the one we have seen, and a quadruple radiation. And in shape, they look very different. The dipole we have seen, quadruple looks like a uh, So, do we have any daisy in our radiation pattern? That would be a signal in our tomograph. So, the way to check this is to measure this ratio of radiation. Zero, then it's deformed. Okay, so that's uh, we will re so either we test pattern or translation pattern, and that would be the, the signature of the formation. Okay. Um, uh, so, as you can see, and the data to show is 1987. Well, to do that, you have to build the equipment now to measure these radiations. And uh, about uh, 12 years later, we built the first equipment. And the way it works, this is. Uh, Basically, a four antenna one, two, three, four. It's the point of the radiation. Not. This was an expensive instrument, costed five million dollars uh, then, uh, because ultra high precision is needed. Made the uh, cover of the magazines. Each detector weighed 14 tons and it had to be held for months within one cubic millimeter. Very unique and it's pointy with an accuracy of a fraction of a degree. It was an engineering fit. As you see, there is a curve. So easily defined. When it comes to measurements, it's a nightmare. Okay? Um, this gave the first results that were positive. Namely, the problem was not spherical. The problem is that they were incomplete. It's like measuring the antenna pattern, but you grab only part of it. There are many antenna shapes that can do that. So you have to get it really dependent. So we had to to do this, and actually, uh, in 2006, at a workshop we had about this at MIT, I said I would not measure anything more till I understand we an analyze this in the best possible way. That, at that time, was the challenge that there were computational resources that could do it better, and we spent a lot of time doing that. 
computers were essential to move forward, and better instrumentation. Move forward, we did more experiments with this. Uh, and uh, cost of fortune, as you can imagine. And eventually, the latest case of paper that done, shown in the thesis of, of, of Lefteris, he didn't do the experiments. An army of people did it, credit to a collective work of about 200 people, build this equipment and measure it uh, with the equipment that is shown here. And here is a tone. One full of uh, detectors and exceedingly here is a picture of it. Detectors like the Tom Glossar. And just to give you a, a feeling of how it is, that was only the part frozen. Temperature, a quarter of a degree above absolute zero. Okay. One of the coldest spots in the universe. A quarter of a degree. So only the target was several million, just to get the target. Now I won't tell you what the rest cost. The latest technology, you get the data. And what do you get? OK, here is our part. That's what after we have measured we measured the frozen proton uh, target in a very precise way and if you put all this together we get an emr value this is the probability Perfect data, you don't get a perfect answer. You get it with an uncertainty. It says that this ratio, the signal for deformation, is the ratio of this is just that EMR to be But certainly, here if you look where the wall is. No chance that is zero. It's actually what the physics said, five sigma away. So it's a discovery, classified as a discovery. And in this analysis, there are no uncertainties, no model. That's why the title they said model independent, no assumptions. It's just the data. And if you take the data, there are various models calculated and, and so on. I won't get, get into it. This is the end of the story. This is the latest uh, precise, actually the first model independent with no assumptions measure of this uh, quantity. Uh, the EMR is non-zero, the proton is deformed. Okay? So it's deformed, so what? What does this, uh, uh, why is this important? What does it tell us? Who cares? Certainly, it doesn't classify for innovation. I don't think we'll be selling uh, deformed products for souvenirs anytime soon. Um, but it tells us a lot about our company. Tell us, as we said, about four quarters, which is what shaped our universe. Times low thousand. No pretty well uh, 
So, uh, this has to do with something that you know, but that's even more difficult topic the structure of the vacuum. Yes, vacuum is full of things, and this is uh, beginning uh, to tell us. So I hope that uh, this is the end. I hope that I challenged at least some of the concepts that uh, we think we know, size, shape, uh, both classically and in the quantum world. And uh, I hope I didn't put everybody to sleep, at least we still some people are away. It's a, it's a, it's a, this is a real challenge how to tell this story without uh, mathematics, quantum mechanics, and relativity. And I hope I got purpose of the story right. Thank you very much. Actually, it would be a challenge if you did that too. Tina asked the question. I assume that this is not the Uh, yes, the, this is the essence of quantum mechanics.
next step is how this helps by the Yeah, yes. Why it's not very Similar to statistical force could change in size. question what if we manipulate some component like the temperature or pressure around the, the photon environment so that we can do simulation process how it different
No, the, the question is, have they done planning? Any applications. And so said Professor Wilson, the senator said, How is the formula going to contribute to the national economy? This knowledge of fundamental physics. Uh, and he insisted he wanted to get an answer. He said, What about we are in dire straits with the war? Is it going to help the war effort? of the uh, United States. And most people, when they ask this question, they go around, oh, they use these very fancy technologies, which will be a spin-off and will make better rockets and uh, superconductivity here, and that it will improve at the end. The, uh, so Wilson. Uh, which I like you for another reason. Uh, he also had a passion for art. The building in in the family lab. Uh, the uh, uh, <laughs> the um, he said no, senator. It will not improve uh, the except in one reason. It will make this country worth defending. On. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Of other particles uh, besides proton. There to ask questions about said that our body <laughs> this proton. <laughs> 